This is Jason Belzer for Athletic Director U, and I am joined today by Heather Like, the Director of Athletics at the University of Pittsburgh, and Carrie Cecil, the CEO of Social Media Sports Management and mm -hmm. NHL Communications. And we're going to discuss the role of social media in college athletics. Um, we've seen social media, the good and the bad, over the last few years in college athletics. And now more and more athletic directors and athletic departments have to respond accordingly to use social media to help build a fan base, reach out to their stakeholders and constituents, but also deal with some of the negativity that goes along with it. Okay. Carrie, you work in this space. You're a crisis consultant and a social media consultant. Tell us about how some of your brand strategies and how you've worked with athletic departments to help them with their social media. That's, it's a great question. I think that from a crisis standpoint, um, we used to have 24 to 72 hours, right? Maybe even four years ago, to disseminate a narrative that would protect the client, right? And today we see that is two minutes. So we're seeing more and more preparing on the front end, right? The, the crisis strategies, like if you're gonna make a hire um, that may be controversial, if you have an investigation that's going on, it's really getting prepared on the front end to actually address the social media um, say positively or negatively to impact your narrative. So it's really trying to educate the stakeholders sure. on an ounce of prevention's worth a pound of cure, right? So getting them buttoned up on the front end, I would say, is the thing that's most changed for us. Sure. Mm -hmm. Heather, you personally are great on social media, using social media as a tool to reach out to your fans and stakeholders. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the strategy that you've used in your career and Pittsburgh strategy when it comes to social media. Yeah, I mean, I think it, the social media aspect, um, it's, it's obviously, it continues to be new. It continues to be um, an unbelievable mechanism for communication. Uh, and it's growing with our recruits, with our fan base, with our ticket holders, our donors, all those types of people, um, and just the general public and, and, and fan base in Pittsburgh and uh, across the country and across the world. And so I think you have to have a strategy about what you know, what's the goal behind using social media? And for for me and for for us at Pitt, it's it's really about promoting um, your student athletes and your programs and the university at large, and and making it's just another really platform for communication. And so for us, it's uh, you know I, I I try to keep it very professionally based, um, but I think it allows your personality to come out a little bit. Um, and, you know, for us, it's, it's really about promoting what the positive stories that our student athletes wouldn't, uh, might not otherwise be picked up. And, um, you know, we know the generation of recruits that we're dealing with, um, you know, the, the billions of people on social media and the amount of reach that it actually has. And good, bad, or indifferent, it's the device that kids in, and the world is using. And so I think for us to not use that platform is, you know, we'd be remiss. Um, but you always have to be careful about it, sure. obviously, as well. Sure. So uh, I think what you've kind of talked about here is the fact that social media is a great way to tell a story and mm -hmm. to tell a story that maybe somebody else in the media wouldn't usually do it. Uh, but there seems to be instances recently where uh, the rest of the world is trying to shape the story mm -hmm. via social media. We saw it happen at the University of Tennessee. Um, what was kind of your reaction to that, and, and what has your athletic department or you personally uh, looked at and said, you know, how do we make sure that we're protecting ourselves and, and having an open dialogue and conversation with our constituents and stakeholders um, to avoid what we would call maybe brand terrorism, social media terrorism? Mm -hmm. Well, I think Carrie's point at the very beginning is, is very poignant in the fact that you really need to be prepared and anticipate and have a lot of dialogue ahead of time. Um, you know, unfortunately, what happened at Tennessee is is really somewhat unprecedented, in in the fact of the you know the breadth of social media that really kind of took off. Um, but for us, it, you know, we we analyze and, and you always try to learn. There's a lot of teachable lessons in what we do in in the world of you know in in our world of, of teaching young people and teaching ourselves. And I think that you know it's about really trying to. Um, make sure that you anticipate the issues and be as clear in the communication um, in whatever type of communication it needs to be and and be prepared to be responsive when you have to. Sure. Carrie, how do universities, athletic departments, athletic directors better prepare themselves for situations like that and, and maybe help prevent brand terrorism? 
Another great question. So um, clearly, I don't have all the answers. I think what Heather had said about it being unprecedented was a great learning, uh, unfortunately, for all of the people involved in that, um, whether it was UT or, or John Corey or, or Greg Schiano or any of those people. I think that we have an opportunity to learn, mm -hmm. right? And so when we go to um, make major decisions, when, when stakeholders are going to make major decisions or they're under investigation or they're um, launching new programming, they're launching new revenue things, I think it's now um, critical that they have social listening tools, right, before they do that, almost like what we do in a political campaign. So you float out, you balloon it out, and, and you kind of see the temperature and the audience sentiment. And then you're able to easily pivot, right? And you're not caught in a sort of, as you said, social media brand terrorism. So you get your narrative out. Um, you can see across the analytics. Analytics don't lie. Data is the new oil, right? So we need to better educate um, everyone within the NCAA about how to use that and how to use it cost effectively, right, to get their, their messages out, I would sure. say. Heather, what worries you most about social media and, and has has your athletic department and the athletic departments that you've worked with, have you kind of implemented any uh, procedures or ways of approaching certain things and policies as to how you're going to use social media? Um, you know, the, we live every day with 18 to 22 year old young people and, um, and so, you know, what keeps you up at night is obviously just kids making poor choices, staff members making poor choices, and we're all human. Um, but you know, trying to educate them about the importance of the decisions that they constantly make. And, you know, I, unfortunately, you know, they make mistakes and, and now it's just captured so much, much easier. And um, so, you know, there's a lot of, lot of teachable lessons in what we do every day. And so, unfortunately, that's one that just be, can become so public so quickly and it just has, you know, obviously tentacles that take off in a lot much faster pace than, than in the, in, you know, back in the day, if you will. So, I mean, that's probably what keeps you up at night. Kids making great decisions, staff members, we all um, making good decisions every day. Sure. Carrie, talk to me about how you handle crisis and, and work with a number of different clients that have dealt with this. How do you weather the storm once it's actually happened? I think every... First of all, when you're in crisis and it's illegal, you're lockstep with a legal process, right? Because what you may want to come out and say um, to defend yourself or your program or your reputation, right? You want to say it immediately and win the day. But in a legal strategy, um, in this industry, whether it's um, getting fired with cause, without cause, whether it's um, you're innocent, you're guilty, you know, we have to do everything parallel, right? But we have to do it on our own branded pages. I mean, I think social media, the word social media is for so many athletic stakeholders. My own husband's a coach and he just, it's like they cringe and it scares them. It's like a dirty word almost, right? So I wanna kind of rebrand social media to say, this is your owned, you own it, media. So right. what is the story that you're telling on your owned media that's safe, right? That's um, not uh, going to impact your legal strategies right? And is it representing your student athletes, your coaches, your program, and your career, right? What do you stand for? I mean, I sat with an athletic director last night who may be the kindest, um, smartest uh, AD. He's so wonderful, right? Not on social media at all. Does not, he was like, nope, mm -mm, nope. And I was like, if people knew you the way that I know you, right? When the stuff hits the fan, you're going to have potentially hundreds of thousands of people that like you right. because you're likable, right? So I think, you know, we have to educate people on how to use their owned media, their social media better and, and make them not afraid of it, right? And it's not intrusive and it's not violating your privacy. It's, it's really a wonderful PR tool to tell your story. Right. So you, you would be an advocate of somebody being proactive because there are so many people in our industry that choose to just stay off of it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they even may say to their student athletes, don't go on it. Coaches are notorious for that. Mm -hmm. Let's not have distractions. Mm -hmm. um, but you're saying use it because if something bad happens, you might already be able to create some sort of rapport with your stakeholders and, and they might actually help you in times of crisis. 
Absolutely. When you're in a crisis and you're a power five AD or you're even, you know, or you're division three AD or division mid major or whatever, you have to have that ability to tell your story and you have to be proactive. I mean, recently uh, I looked at a case study um, that we were part of just to show uh, the analytics because analytics don't lie, right? It's not me telling you that's a nice coat. Right. It's like 300,000 people telling you it's a nice coat, right? So I think you have to have the the technology in place first, right? And then you have to show them how to use it and not to be afraid of it. And you need to get them on it. I just, I think it can change the tide and the audience sentiment and what people think of you. And, and it's not just your audience in this business, it's jurors, it's donors, it's student athletes, it's future recruits, it's family members. It's all of this audience that has the potential to know you. So it's not just, oh, I'm putting out um, our, that we won yesterday. It's really a way to get people to like you and like your programs. Is there, uh, as we wrap up here, is there anything that you would recommend, maybe one or two things, and either from both of you, um, as to how athletic departments and athletic directors can better use social media to, to benefit themselves, to benefit their programs and their institutions? Well, I wouldn't call myself an expert by any means in this area, but I will give one example that was unique. You know, I just uh, came to Pitt in, uh, about a year ago, not quite. And so you're trying to build a culture of, of, of um, you know, obviously we're, of comprehensive excellence, that we're all in this together, that we have 19 teams and they're incredibly important. And we want to be united and we want to be really intentional about that. And um, so we created this concept called Panthers Unite, and the Panthers Unite game was one game for every team. And so on that particular game, I don't expect you to go to every baseball game, but come to the Panthers Unite baseball game, right? So come to the first Panthers Unite game. Our first Panthers Unite game was a football game. So we're going to do this great tailgate before the football game just for the student athletes and bring them together in a social setting that's a healthy environment, that's a fun environment that they're all excited to be a part of. And so we use social media. I mean, again, I'm not prolific in any of this, my staff will laugh that I'm even talking about it, but <laughs> Snapchat. So the young people on our media team created a geo filter, I think it's called, for the tailgate tent. And so when they all got there, they were Snapchatting and they had the Panthers Unite and I was like, how did this get on there? <laughs> and they're like, well, we created it. I'm like, you actually can create that, you know? Yeah. So, um, and I just saw it on Snapchat, the NCAA convention, which is obviously yeah. where we're at. But, you know, that's a positive way that actually really united our student athlete population that were all there that day. They were taking pictures. They were, you know, and, and so I think that there's some very unique, positive ways to utilize that, that, um, that those tools and you know get your young people on your team to think creatively about it and think differently about how you can connect and that was just a un so unifying that, approach. It's a great story, great this case thing. study mm -hmm. and positive effect yeah. of social media. It's mm -hmm. done Abs the right way. Absolutely. I, you know I would say that um, I would even take a step back so and say um, th number one education. Right? So we, none of us got the driver's ed of social media. Mm -hmm. We never got the, the 10 and 2 and look in your rearview mirror before you get in the car, right? And you get onto social media. So I would say, number one, having a thoughtful and transparent and fair social media education that is empowering, right? For offense and defense, uh, you know how how to use it as a career development tool for your for yourself as an athletic director or a coach for recruiting, um, and then sort of the best practices, which is sort of cyber safety, right? And and don't don't do this or do it this way, right? Let us help you and why. So I'd say education is the first step, and and then you have great campaigns and great marketing people, and then I would implement you know different types of policies and procedures, right? So we saw the Houston Rockets social media guy amazing at marketing like so great but fired for something he posted right and which was because there's so much gray area right. uh, of it so i think it's um empowering them with education and making them understand the fair policies and practices and then jumping into incredible marketing campaigns that bring your programs together and you can actually use a social listening tool to measure it 
Mm -hmm. So maybe having a tool, I mean, on the back end, just to see, hey, you know, this worked, it didn't work, and that's the great thing about it. Again, analytics don't lie. Dead is the new oil. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a great way to end it. Thank you, Heather and Carrie, for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Thank it's, you. it's awesome. Appreciate it.